Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another episode of Bolts and Boost. Um, today I'm going to go through with you what's next on the plate for the IS300. It starts, it runs, and it drives fairly well. Um, I've only really ran into one issue. That issue has been the uh, Chase Bay's leaking power steering. Um, that has been fixed as they sent me a new hose. Um, from the get-go, I was pretty sure that the hose was leaking. Um in a spot that I couldn't fix, right? So I told them that, um, they said it's rare. Um, of course it's rare and I got it. But anyway, they sent me a new hose and it is not leaking anymore. So this car is leak free, knock on wood. There's no wood in here, closest thing. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna go through, it has a horrendous sound in the stereo. We think it's a ground, it's like a whine, it's very loud and annoying, I can't even have the stereo on. And this thing has like a $4,000 stereo in it back in the day. Um, it's all Kenwood X Exelon and uh, JL stuff. So we want to get that running obviously because uh, it has a pretty powerful stereo. Um, I got a new muffler installed, so it's not a 5 inch cannon that is literally like 2.5 feet long. Um, it is a downspout um, 3 inch three three and a half or three inch tip looks really good uh, i shouldn't get bothered by the cops and it quietened down the drone so i'm going to go through with you what i'm doing i'm also going to be changing the uh, led lights in the hvac um, side of things and yeah it'll be a fun day hopefully we can get some stuff done i have ordered new gauges they are on the way because from the get-go i have not been a fan of pro sport gauges but you cannot see this in the daytime whatsoever when this is lit up even in the day, you can't see this. So, uh, yeah, maybe I'm gonna, in the interim, I'm going to try to pry that clear plastic cover off just so I can see my temp and my boost because I'm flying blind here. So, uh, yeah, let's get started on this thing. So one thing I did want to show you guys was the hood insulator is gone. So I've been running this car fairly well. Um, it's been running about 195 Fahrenheit on the highway, which is perfect. And then when you're stopped in a drive through or chilling with friends in a parking lot, whatever it may be, it kind of creeps up to like 215, 217 mark, which is where I don't like it um, being. Anything over 220 is technically overheating. Um, this thing hasn't reached there yet, and I don't want it to. So I took the hood insulator out online, excuse me, online on the IS forums. They say that people have dropped 30 degrees, I'm assuming Fahrenheit. So running a right around that 195 mark um, at most times. So that's where I wanna be. 195 on the highway, that just tells me my cooling system is working properly. Uh, the 215 while stationary, you know, hood insulator might be keeping hot air in. Um, my fans might not be as good as the OEM ones, which they're probably not. Um, they say that a stock, 2J fan is the best fan, so I do have my my uh, small little spal fans in there, but um, they're I don't think they're pushing the same amount of air. Um, and also debris in the radiator, I blew out a bunch yesterday, but I didn't get all of it because I don't have the right tool. I actually do have the right tool, but it's leaking air, so uh, I'll have to figure out an alternative for that. But we're making progress, so that's what counts. I'm going to see if taking this hood insulator off does anything. Um, people say that it peels paint because of the heat. I have never experienced that and I've done this many times. So I think people are just over being, or being over cautious. Um, but either way, we'll see. It's not like this hood is mint by any stretch of the imagination. So I'm willing to take that risk. And if it does start peeling paint, I will just cut it out and make a vent wherever it peels paint. Um, I am looking for a carbon fiber hood for this thing. So with that, I am now able to see my gauge properly. So I took the scratched up lens off the thing and now we're gonna be able to see it because this was just causing way too much uh, reflection in the daytime. And now that that is gone, I will be able to see both the Pro Sport gauges even though I ordered brand new glow shift gauges for this thing. Um, in, the, in the meantime, I'll be able to see my temperature and my boost. So. Let's move on to the stereo and the HVAC lights. All right, guys, so 
now that I'm into the dash here, um, I hate that they replaced the normal metal bracket with the plastic ones because the metal one would work just fine for all of this. But um, she's decently clean. However, the ground is going into the factory harness and that's not always optimal. So I'm going to move the ground up to here where this bolt is and uh, manually pop it there. And then in the meantime, I'm going to work on this thing. This thing's off now. Uh, I got to take those little screws out and then just replace the bulbs in there with the kit I got here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. It's always scary working with these boards because of, you know, anything can go wrong really. Here's all the lights here. Got one, two, three, four, five. And yeah, so that thing right there, you just got to lift up on this clip here and then pull it out. And then when you put it back in, just close the clip. So I'm gonna go grab a flathead screwdriver and replace all these lights. It looks like there's one up here as well. So yeah, flathead screwdriver and uh, put it in there and spin it out. All right, so all the white ones have been replaced. All four, they did send me an extra one of those. Uh, this one, was for the key ring, but it, if you recall another video, I used my own. And those are all the factory ones I'll be keeping for obvious reasons. And now I'm gonna gently put the ribbon back in there, snap this down, and then screw it all together. And I'll show you that as well. All right, so there's the ribbon all in place and the clip clipped in, it kind of slides, focus, slides into that little slot and then it's locked. And then you just pull it out and lift it up to, to uh, get the ribbon out of there. So I'm gonna screw these two panels back together. All right, found success in some areas and none in the other. The other would be the, you can hear that screeching sound. I have a really good ground off the stereo and it's still making that sound. So it's, I believe coming from the grounds in the amp, um, but I finished the LEDs in the HVAC, it looks really good. However, I do recommend plugging it in before you put everything back together because I had to take this out three times and uh, switch around the bulbs because they must be polarized, polarized. Um, so I just had to switch them around and now everything's working as it should. So uh, just a reminder to check before you put everything back together. Well, Besides that annoying screeching through my speakers, it was a successful day. I can now see my gauges for the most part, and I'm gonna be able to see them in the daytime, which is what matters until my other gauges arrive. I'm probably gonna have to re put some, you know, 3M tape on that, but uh, got my white LEDs, my white LEDs. It, uh, it doesn't look too flashy, but it just looks more updated. If you will, I'm going to shut this off because it's probably killing your guys' ears just like it is mine. Oh yeah, look at that, eh? Huh. Anyway, this might be a pump running, but... Success! Um, now I'm just going to put the cooling plate back on the front and uh, take it for a drive and see how my temps are um, when it's nice out. That is because it's raining right now. All right, everybody, that concludes this video. Uh, I took the IS out for a little burn. It was not long whatsoever, but from what I could tell, the temperature stayed right around that 190 mark. So, I mean, inconclusively, conclusively, it's working. Uh, my goal of making the car run cooler just might be working. Um, so, obviously, we're going to get more feedback from that. Once the weather cooperates more and I'm able to take it for longer drives and more of a start-stop situation, I did try to do that at lights and stuff and the temperature didn't creep up like it used to. So I think removing that hood insulator, um, getting all the debris out of my intercooler, the intercooler is brand new, sorry, I meant the AC condenser and the radiator. And maybe the uh, water wetter is working its way through the system because the car is still so new to the road right now. 
So I think everything is kind of working. Um, I'm obviously not going to stop here. There's still a lot more coming for this car, um, especially in the cooling department. I got those gauges on the way. I am going to play with the suspension a bit. I'm going to heighten it a bit in the back and drop it a bit in the front, probably by the same amount. I'm probably going to raise it, I don't know, 0.5 of an inch in the back and drop it 0.5 of an inch up front. So that's all I have for you guys today. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to check out the channel for other videos just like this because this is what this channel is about. Um, and make sure to smash that like button and subscribe. All right, everybody. Peace.